So this morning, I have a um, 35-minute sermon I'm going to do in the next nine minutes. How does that sound? (laughs) It's Father's Day. Uh, I don't want to keep you here too long, but I do have just a few important things that I want to share with you this morning. And it's in regard to seeking after God's heart. Today really is going to be less of a sermon and more of a teaching, more of a time to help us understand God a little bit better and to understand how we can how we can follow Him and get to know Him better and come before Him in ways that that we want to be want to be impacting in our life and in His life. In particular, I want to talk about how Scripture mentions over 50 times different people fasting as a way of connecting with God, as a way of coming after God's heart and getting to understand God just a little bit better. Now, throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, we see just passing remarks that that David fasted while he grieved, or that Paul and, and Silas got together and they fasted, that King Solomon fasted, that Elijah fasted, that Jesus went and fasted as well. And I think there are some things that I want to to just share with you today, and then some things that I want to leave with you as a challenge and a call to fasting uh, for our church and for things in your life on behalf of uh, our church and our leadership team as well. But you may wonder, why fast? Why should we fast? I believe that fasting is a way of seeking after God's heart, seeking after God himself. It's a way that we can open our eyes to see his hand at work in a clearer way, but also open ourselves up to hear from God and to see more of God and to have him be more active in our lives and understand him in new ways. It's a way for us to get ready to follow him, but also to partner with him in what he's doing in our midst. Fasting, in essence, is about seeking after God's heart through the circumstances of life that you're in. Sometimes people fast after they've suffered a great loss. They come before God grieving and fasting because of what has happened in their life. And sometimes they have a great need and they come before him in Scripture because of something that's going on in their family, in a loved one's life, in the church, or in the the kingdom of God. And they come before him asking God to intervene and, and, and to show up in a miraculous way. I believe that we are all here this morning because we share something similar, a connection with God. A connection can, our connection can be small, it can be great, it can be a new connection that could be decades old, but we are here because we have a connection with God and God is drawing us closer to Him. And we come back each week because of that same connection, because we want more of God and we want our connection with God to grow even deeper. We desire to be close to Him, but there is more and sometimes... Uh, more out there that we're missing. I want to think about it this way. This is the way one um, author talked about it. He said, and I gave this illustration. How many of you, when you have, or it's like me actually, just like this author writes, but Thanksgiving comes around and you, you get together and you're having preparing for a big meal. And how many of you, as you're preparing, and you may have family with you, it may just be your immediate family, but that that uh, turkey is roasting away or the ham is cooking, and you walk through the kitchen continually and taste things and try things. And then by, by the time the meal comes around, you can't really enjoy it because you're already full from everything that you've tasted just to make sure it was safe. It's kind of like that with God. We have so many limited, so much limited time in the day that we have tasted, we've done things that have filled up our day, that when it comes time to feast with Him, that we're already full, that there's no room left for God to show up in the day. Now, we do this by maybe nibbling on our computers. Maybe it's investing TV. Maybe it's world politics or shopping or Facebook or Instagram or talking on the phone. Maybe we get busy with home repairs, and the list could go on and on. And notice that none of these things are bad in and of themselves. That we don't have to be doing sinful things to take up all of the time in our life that we have to, for God or that we should give to God. But we can nibble away at so many little things that we lose focus on maybe what God has in store for us in some new way. We fill ourselves up with so much stuff that there's nothing left for God. No time, no strength, no thought of what He had in store for us that day. We filled up on the little 
and not left any room for the work of God. And I think this is one of the ways that fasting can play a part in our spiritual journey with, with God. Because it's a way of trying to recapture that hunger for Him. Of getting rid of something that we may be nibbling on or may be taking up some time in our life and giving us an opportunity to turn that time into a way that we focus on God and hear from Him and cry out to Him and call upon Him in a new way. Another pastor, as I was reading, he put it this way. He said, suppose that I told you that there was a million dollars hidden in your house. And if you found it, you could have every penny of it. It was yours. What would you do if you knew that that was the prize at the end? I'd, I'd take my holidays right now. I'd be gone tomorrow. I'd go home and I'd take that house apart brick, or, well, it's not brick, nail by nail, right? I'd take it apart until I found that money and it, because I, it would be so important to me and so focused for me. Fasting is like that. It expresses that same kind of passion. I wouldn't get distracted with, uh, you know, Got Talent on TV or The Amazing Race. I wouldn't get distracted uh, by what's going on in the world around me. I would be so focused on this amazing thing that could potentially be mine. And fasting is like that. It expresses that same kind of passion to God, to find Him in the midst of the busyness of life, putting something aside so that we can seek after Him. And we do see this evidence throughout Scripture of people who want to see more of God. Even if they've seen great things, Moses led the people out of Israel, or out of Egypt, towards Israel. They they had just experienced the ten plagues of Egypt. They walked across a dry sea with the water spread apart, as was so wonderfully illustrated by our children this morning with the parting of the Red Sea. And it was shortly after that, as they passed through this, and they saw God at work, Moses cried out. He said, Lord, let me see your glory. I want to see more of you. He just experienced amazing things, yet he took it part a time of fasting so that he would see God even clearer than he already had. He wanted more of him. In a way, when we begin to fast, it expresses our hunger pains for him. I want to be clear, though. Biblically, fasting does not inspire or provoke God to love you more. You need to be, I need to be clear that there's nothing that we can do that can cause God to love us more. Just because we commit to fasting doesn't mean that God loves us anymore. And just because you don't fast doesn't mean that God loves you any less. God loves us more than you could ever ask or imagine, and that will never change. Fasting does not make him love you more. You do not earn brownie points in his books. For fasting. You are already his treasured possession. He already delights in you and enjoys being with you. Fasting also is not a magic bullet. Kind of, It's not a get-rich-quick scheme for prayers. It's not like if you have something that you want to see God do in your life that if you all of a sudden commit to fast, just snap your fingers and it's going to happen because you're fasting. That's not the way fasting really works. In Scripture, yes, God does respond to fasting, but not every time. King David uh, went through an affair. He, he had a child with Bathsheba, an affair with her, and the consequences of that, God said, is that you will lose the child that she bears. And David said, no, that's, that's not what I want. It's not that child's fault, it's my fault. And he fasted, and he wept, and he cried out before God for about a week, and that baby died. And he continued to fast, and it said he was grieved in his spirit and cried out before God. And then he got up and he said, God, I still trust in you, even though this has happened. Even though you didn't answer my prayer, I still trust that you knew what was going on, and I trust that that child is with you. It doesn't give us exactly what we ask for, but it can open our eyes to see what God is doing in our midst. We don't fast to be forgiven because God has already forgiven us through what Jesus has done on the cross. He has already done that. But we do fast because we want to seek God's face and because we want to see Him at work in our lives. In the sheet that I gave you this, um, I don't know what color this is, this sheet, um, this is actually different things that you can do. Um, the front side where it says preparation for the fast you intend to participate in. And it talks about what things you can do as you prepare to fast. This sheet 
I want to tell you is not... Um, I borrowed this from a pastor friend of mine, from Pastor Keith from Pleasant Hill Mennonite. He prepared a sheet like this for his church a few months ago when he was calling them to fast. And I, I'm borrowing it from him and it's slightly edited from the version he used. But I want you to take this home and I want you to read through it and consider how you may fast with us. There are different kinds of fasts that you can do. And I want to walk through them real quick. They're near the bottom on that front page where it says common types of fasts practiced by Christians. There can be a 24-hour partial fast. And so that would be fasting from meals, but still drinking. Or there could be some other way you could do that. I'll still drink fruits and fruit juices or vegetables. Or I will even maybe extend it longer than that. I'll fast from one meal a day for a week. And that's the second option. I'll fast from maybe lunch every day for a week. Or you could do a Daniel fast, or you could do a partial fast. Say, I'm only, I'm not going to eat any any meat for the next week. I'm going to give up meat and eat only fruits and vegetables for that week, or something else in that way. We know from the story of Daniel in the Old Testament that as they were taken captive, they picked the, the best looking, the, the brightest young men to become leaders in their in this kingdom in Babylon. And they gave them the choicest food. So all of the meats that were offered to other gods were given to these men to, to strengthen them. And Daniel said, you know, for, for those of us from Israel, those of us who follow Yahweh, follow God, the God in heaven, um, we don't want to eat that meat. And so we invite you to test us. Feed us only the fruits and vegetables, not the meat that you have offered us. And if at the end of this time period we are not just as strong or stronger and healthier than the rest, we will join in. And God honored their fast as they fasted from the meat that was given to them and, and wine and they ate only the fruits and vegetables that were there. And we call that a Daniel fast. It could be giving up something that you would normally do, eat throughout the day or drink, um, for a fast. Often it's a 21-day fast, just like in the book of Daniel. Or you can do a full fast, and that would be giving up all food and water. Now, this one is a hard one to do. It can be really hard on your body. And I, I'd encourage you, if you've never done a full fast before, to not make it your first step into fasting. Try, try a partial fast for one day. Try a partial fast for a week, where you take away a meal for a week, or do something. If you are going to do a full fast, for a day, um, then spend some time just learning and reading how to prepare your body for that and, and what to, you can notice and do. Or come talk to me and we can talk about it um, later. Or you can do a medical condition or technology fast, which can be very helpful in our culture. So if there's a reason that you shouldn't fast from food, and for some of you that's true, um, then maybe there's something else in your life that eats up your time that you could fast. Maybe it's Facebook. Maybe it's some game that you play. Maybe it's some TV show that you watch. But you will say, for the next week or two weeks, I'm going to give up this. I'm going to delete it from my phone. Um, I'm going to put, put the remote away, and I'm not going to watch this show. And we do this not for the sake of fasting any of these items. We do this so that we can replace the time that we've nibbled away at and replace that time with time with God in that, in that sense. And so when you give up a meal a day, you don't just continue working through that lunch hour or just continue working. You take the time that you would have used to do that and you spend it focusing on God, spending time in prayer or spending time in a devotional, finding a devotional on fasting on your, on your app, on your Bible or online, or spending time just reading scripture during that and just coming before God in that way. So you don't fast just for fasting's sake. But you fast so that you can spend a focused amount of time giving that back to God in a certain way. There are many other things that are on the sheet that I encourage you to look at. But I want to just finish today by talking about the priorities for us and for our church that I want you to consider while fasting. It's on the back page of that orange sheet. But we want to invite you as a leadership team to fast with us over the next one to two weeks whatever fast you choose, in whatever way you choose. But we want it to be voluntary. We don't want to force you. Uh, but at our leadership team meeting, we talked about this, and we said that we will fast on behalf of our church and, and on behalf of people in our church. 
of over this time in a way that God has spoken to us about. So it's going to be different for each one of us. But we want to commit to this. And so I think these are some of the things that Lord is the Lord is seeking to do in our church. We want to see lost people saved through relationship and witness with our church family. We want to see people come to meet Jesus. And that's one of the things I'm going to be praying about while we fast, particularly. We also would want to see how we can be effectively involved in disciple-making here in our church. And how we can continue to grow people in their knowledge and understanding and in their relationship with God, leading people towards baptism, leading people into a deeper relationship with Him. We want our leadership team to have wisdom and discernment as they govern us. And I want to invite you to pray for us as I pray for us as we guide and govern the church um, with God's direction and with his plans is what we are seeking. We also want to ask that you would help us that we would follow God's plan for our financial situation that we're in, that God would give us wisdom in what to do in the meeting tomorrow night and in the, the weeks and months ahead as a church as well. We want to ask that you would pray with us that our financial needs would be met. Because we believe God is doing great things in our church, and we believe that he has great plans for our church. Um, and we just want to invite you to fast and pray with us in that way, that our financial needs would be met so that we may continue doing great things. We want to invite you to fast for the marriages and families in our congregation, that they would be protected and preserved and that God would provide for us. And we want to invite you to fast for those who are suffering with ill health and that they would experience a powerful touch of God in their physical life and spirit. In your lives, there may be someone in particular that you want to pray for. There may be something in your own heart that you want God to work in in a certain way. And I encourage you to, to add that to this list and to pray for those things that God has laid on your heart. And then over the next week or two, you can send me an e- email if God speaks to you in some way. And there's some consideration for giving feedback at the bottom of that page, some things that you could share with us. I'm going to invite the worship team up to lead us in our last song. But as they do that, in your bulletin, there's one other card that talks about fasting. A little card. I don't have a copy of it up here, but you can raise one up and show me that you've got it. I want to finish with this song. And while we're singing out, I just want to invite you to fill that out if you know what you might do. Just spend a moment or two asking God, do you want me to participate in this fast? Do you want me to come before you in this way? And if so, what are what is the way that you might consider fasting this week or next week? And just put your name on it, check a box. It's not a promise. It's not a commitment. You may leave today and God may completely change your mind and say, no, it's really not Facebook. I really am supposed to give up call thing, whatever it is. Um, and that's okay. You don't need to tell me. You can if you want. Um, But I just want to encourage you to think about that. And I want to have something that I can pray for you over the next week as well. As I fast, as I pray, I'm going to be praying for each one of you, each one of you by name as we come into this season and into this time. And so if there is something, fill that out, drop it into the offering box or hand it to me. Um, And again, just remember that, that this is between you and God. It's voluntary. Even if you don't fill out the card, know that I'll still be praying for each one of you. Uh, um, And I will be asking God to to meet with us over this season as I invite you to help uh, to bring us before God so that he may meet with us too. Let's sing this last song together. I invite you to fill out your, your sheet and then we'll close our service today.